All right, everyone. Welcome back to the highly anticipated final deck tech to MetaZoo's, I guess, the the final meta <laughs> before it had closed. This is a shout out to the five people that are still watching MetaZoo videos. I am mostly making this because, well, I just wanted to kind of put a nail in the coffin, make a deck tech, and I said I would do it. So, what you'll see here, I think this is a 41 card deck, 40, yeah, 41 is usually what I did in the past. It's been a while since I even looked at this, so fairly ill-prepared here. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can off memory, see if I even know how to play this, but for those that still want to run a, what I consider to be a top meta, meta zoo deck or whatever, um, by all means, try to put this together see what you can do um and again this is to address all the people that were moaning about joga here's something that's a bit of a creative alternative uh if you think joga was a problem there's some cards in here that i think may have been more problematic so anyways to start us off i'm gonna play a one of so this is a uh, san pedro mountains mummy overall kind of a maybe a bad card the stone skin's really good against joga i suppose but the biggest effect here that you kind of want to look for is the contract so you may search your spell book for a special aura page and named meteoric fusion aura and place it into your chapter arena earth aura costs of pages may be paid with cosmic that's fairly irrelevant in this deck really the idea that um you can tutor for your resources it's kind of huge, especially off of one uh, one Earth. And since MetaZoo left us with Earth fusions, Earth is probably your most um, blendable deck, I suppose. So Earth is uh, the answer here. Oh, and Tehihan. So, like, I suppose most folks would consider the counter to Jogas maybe being Tehihans or Giants, I guess, but... There, there's definitely some truth there, but then you kind of run into maybe light as a hard counter. I, I remember Rainbow Crow being a considerable problem, and you know Octena, Octena especially, and we'll get to that here in a bit. But this is going to enable your Dozovitz and our other giant here that is going to allow you to get online and ramp up quicker. The big arena effect is this page is dealt. 10 less damage uh, we don't worry about that with an aura cost of one it's really the beastie giant cost reduction uh with three or three less aura anytime of any type to contract yada 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 this effect does not stack so again it's another field spell for giants with lp when it comes to metazoo i always thought of you know beastie is really operated more like spell cards or things like that especially with their arena effects so it was really a spell card with LP. That's the way I like to think about these things. Uh, second and a third Tehihan. I found that to be plenty consistent. Um, any more, it's a brick, and any less, you're just not going to find it. Dose of its, um, you know, it's kind of the goat here. Tribal boost, amazing. If you control at least two dark pages, this beastie gains Bloodsucker. Bloodsucker is massive because of its interaction with Ectena. Um, I think that in particular, you know, Actena having first strike and all this other stuff, it, it attacks the Dose of its, doesn't kill it. Dose of its heals up and then you're in great shape. Um, this beastie also ignores flying and it cannot be destroyed by dark spells, so couldn't be hateful demised. Also very good. Um, and stone skin. Yeah. So your Joga problem is not really a problem. And fear, because why not? Fear's good. Fear's good. Bounce the cards you don't want to interact with and get that tempo play. So, of course, the attack to this attack deals X damage, where X is the total amount of bonus LP this beastie has. It um, works with tribal boost as well. Just overall, good card, good card. So, we run those at our max bubble limit of three. And that's kind of your win condition here. It hits hard, and it's going to close out the game. So, Kiwaka, yeah. 
two uh, earth, three forest. Might consider that a challenge to cast, but in all honesty, with the amount of deck thinning and drawing and resource reduction in this deck, you're really not going to be running into any problems. Again, Tehihan, you can pay you know, three earth for this guy. You can cast it off the dark. We have dark ore in this deck. I'll touch on that at the end. I think that ore is at the end here. But in particular here, you can just cast this off of two earth with a Tehihan. Um, I've been able to hard cast it in this deck. For those that know me, um, I do run growth in just about every deck. So you will see a forest uh, earth fusion aura. Oh, and Kiwok, another thing to, to state here. Stoneskin. Yeah, Stoneskin's good, right? He has Stoneskin. He has Fleet. Um, really fun contract effect where you get to lick your lips and say, you look tasty. Uh, that's always a good time. But really, that in particular, what I enjoy is the Giant's Crush Power. You're, being, you're able to do 20 damage to up to 3 Beasties. So you're just, you know, it's not one-shotting Joga, but over the course of two turns it's wiping them off the board um just a good card all around really so travel boost with the giants as well so good stuff chibi salem's witches because we're running dark aura in this deck it is a deck thinner you get to search your spell book for a page named salem's witches you get to add it to your chapter um you know good enough for me right the destroyed effect obviously you want to cheat out your salem's witch and uh, i don't really bother with the you know trick or treat thing with the discard we you want to discard cards in this deck um i think salem's witch is just considerably maybe one of the best cards in metazoo if you're able to find ways to protect it and things like that giants make great walls for your witch should you choose to keep it around um i we didn't have enough recursion there's a good amount of recursion in metazoo but we didn't get enough to where it was like uh Yu -Gi -Oh's chaos so really milling your opponent's hand with salem's witch is just such a punish it's delinquent duo on wheels um you want salem's witch out on the board so good card it's a tutor and we run these at three you might not need them at three, but I found that it's you you want to see this card. So enough said about that. And then we have the Dark Tower Mothman. Dark Tower Mothman is just a good once again a good card. Um, there might have been some issues with the wording on it, but the way <laughs> I don't think this was the intent of the card. But when it attacks, you get to name a page and target caster reveals their chapter. If they reveal the named page, you get to bookmark two. Um, you know, again, attacking the hand a little bit. You're not really making them discard, but there are ways to know what's in their hand. But you can also uh, declare yourself as a caster. So if you attack with this, you can just show your opponent uh, your hand and draw two cards. So really good the arena effect doesn't come into play here we're not running the point pleasant um terra there was some back and forth on that back in the day and that the terra wouldn't proc this arena i would go ahead and just say at this point if metazoo's no longer supported game you should just run that terra and you should get the arena effect but hey what do i know um yeah so fear of flying got a good evasion it's two drop it's a good card draws cards I suppose the Salem's Witches should have been next, but this is a Cryptid Nation card. Um, I, this is a NFT variant, I guess, but the original printing was Cryptid Nation. Um, yeah, when it's in the arena as well, you get spells in your chapter. They get to cost one less aura of any type to contract. That definitely comes in play. We're running growths. Uh, we're running some board wipe, and we're running... Uh, spot removal as well so this helps with the consistency of getting those um getting those particular pages procced but once again the big appeal here is the power accuse the target caster with at least four pages in the chapter the chosen caster discards two pages at random if any page is discarded if that 
If any page that is discarded as a spell, nothing happens. If you don't hit a spell, they get to play a spell or their next spell for free. So there's some downside to it, I suppose, but by and large, this card's just the punish. So not only are we doing hand control, we have our win conditions with Dozovitz. We have deck thinning with the um, mummy and the same as witch. And now we have Flatwoods Monster. Remember, with the Mountain Mummy, we are searching for a Cosmic Fusion. That's going to allow us to play this. Not only that, but we're running uh, Prismamora as well. Really, the cost for this to be one neutral, one Cosmic is just laughable. It's incredibly easy to play. Um, Meteor Shower is visible. Anytime you may discard this beastie from your chapter to contract this beastie for two less aura. Unfortunately, um, Meteor Shower Terra does not work for this for whatever reason um i have the dimension in a bottle or whatever in this deck and that does not proc this effect but that's neither here nor there um the stat line on this is actually worth running dimension in a bottle in my opinion considering you're getting 25 lp 30 lp and 30 attack right so that number hitting 85 lp and sure 50 attack is nice but 85 lp makes it this two drop just absolutely nasty, especially considering that Cosmic does not have any uh, type disadvantage. And the reason why you want this to stick is you get to name a non-aura page. Casters cannot perform actions with pages that have the same name as the name page until this beastie leaves the arena. So, again, you're getting hand knowledge as well with the Mothman we saw earlier. You're also attacking their hand with Salem's Witches, at which point the thing about meta zoo is there really wasn't there's was a, a good amount of cards made but the decks were a lot mostly a known quantity playing this at two it was no problem because you're usually going to know what your opponent's outs are and if you call their outs um they kind of just lose so this is kind of the ultimate punish i guess you would say getting salem's witch on board and flatwoods monster is just well they're in for a, a tough time so, yeah. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to note about Dozovitz as well. So, the two dark pages, and you're getting Bloodsucker and stuff like that. I know I mentioned that already, but Bloodsucker being as critical as it is for this beastie, you really want to have the darks in this deck. And um, I'll touch on that with the aura as well, because aura counts as, as well. Boulder Bash... Um, this thing just kills Jogas too. I mean, look at that. You can kill one, or you can sort of spread it around. This is just a great utility card. Um, it's basically free in a deck that's running a lot of fusion earth auras, so highly recommend that. I think that's self-explanatory. Growth, I, I don't know. If I was going to make a tier list, I'd probably say this is at least like top three best cards in the game. I'm certainly biased, but... Uh, Play growth, right? Draw five cards. Are you are you kidding me? Um, Salem's Witch is out. This costs you one forest. Uh, sure, why not? Um, kind of self-explanatory there. Board wipe. You know, there's a lot of aggro in MetaZoo. Um, do you play this? Do you not play this? I think you play it. Um, I always... I had this idea when playing MetaZoo that I always wanted... Um, it's like the idea of having hope or an out, right? So one thing I always liked about light or a lot of the decks that I played was that I always wanted to know that even if I was losing, there could be a one card out that could bring me back in the game. And in this case, that's zombie apocalypse. So dimension and bottle. I touched on this earlier. You're just going to buff up your, uh, that flatwoods. I know there's only two flatwoods in your deck, but I think that this is such a substantial bonus that it really doesn't hurt you in any significant way, um, even if you draw into it. And the upside or the potential upside is just something that you um, couldn't really ignore. It's always been impactful when I've played it. I reckon in the mirror, if other people are running that Flatwoods, then you would certainly take this out. But as the meta had left off, nobody was running this deck 
I played a few games with it, and it just just crushed people. Two Absorboras, because we live in Texas, or I live in Texas, and everybody plays rocks. So I'm not about to get dumpstered immediately just because my opponent just dropped four artifacts turn one or something like that, or two even. I don't know. I'm, I have the two in my main, two in the side. Usually I side two more in because... There, <laughs> more rocks are coming in and the thing about absorb aura as well is if you're going to play absorb aura you have to run some rocks as you, you got to run your own so and we have we'll have two of those second anniversary um counter spells always good the neutrals in this game are just kind of busted if you can counter one at a impactful moment then why not run second anniversary this does just that um Especially as this being a little bit more of a control-oriented deck. I wouldn't say it's a hardcore control deck, but you definitely want to have something like this involved. New Year's New Beginnings, because we like the high roll. I will turn one New Year's whenever I can. Then Bookmarks, we like to draw two cards when possible. I think these are really self-explanatory. And they don't match because I like a little variety. <laughs> Two first anniversary celebrations. If you weren't running two of these while this game was still alive, I don't know what you were doing. Um, the whole game runs on traits. So turn off the traits, turn the game around into your favor. Um, the wording on this card's a little jank too. It doesn't actually target as far as I understand. So there's this gets around a lot of um, nonsensical stuff. Power up red, another way to close the game. You put this on Dozovitz, and it's doing like what 200 something damage, I think. Um, again, good card. All right, and then the resources. Maybe should have started with these. We're running two Dark Aura. Uh, the Dozovitz will count the Dark Aura towards its Bloodsucker trait. So even having one of these out on the board is always nice to have. We have a lot of darks in this deck. It just makes sense. Um, the one Forest Fusion Aura, uh, I'm not going to play around with. If I was running Cryptonation or something, maybe I'd cut this and do a different aura for the growth. But between the Kiwaka and the growth, this kind of makes sense. And again, running fusion ores it's not really hurting me in any substantial way because so much of this deck runs off earth to begin with two meteoric fusion ores um you know i want to be able to get those flatwoods out there i can search for these no brainer two sacrificial stones we're running those of its uh playset we're playing a playset of these a lot of dark in this deck too Fusion Aura, or sorry, Prism Auras, we're, we're playing these as well. Um, I've got a lot of rainbow energy in this deck, basically, you know, uh, or I wouldn't say rainbow, but a lot of different colors in here. We're playing Prism Aura. And Possessed Aura, I'm not afraid to brick on this. Uh, so many people, when we left the meta, were running Earth Fusions, so this is as good as an Earth Aura most of the time can't really miss with that and finally we've got our two ponchos thumbnails otherwise known as obsidian obelisk counts as a dark aura or an earth aura and um yeah these are potential absorb aura targets or just considerable ramp for our giants so wow uh thanks for i guess listening to me ramble about this deck tech i could go over the side deck um I'll have to see what's it. I don't even know what's in the side deck. I think it's just junk right now. But we can we can go over it real quick if there's anything of substance in here. Um, let's see. Uh, Absorb Auras. Told you I ran two more of those. Toxic Waters because we hate traits. Um, pretty pretty easy there. I got tired of being bullied by uh, the worms, so Earthquake's relevant. Slide Rock Bolter uh, can totally be side... I don't know if it's much of a side deck card. Part of it belongs in the main deck, but I could never justify it. 
lightning in a bottle because sometimes we're going to time and uh you know i want to win in time i'm not i don't want to lose on the clock jogas um I think Jogas were kind of good in the mirror. I don't really know. I th- I think this is a, a. Oh, you know what? Yeah, Jogas actually were really good against Worms. So this was my Worm matchup. Um, and then Awakule. I love Wily Coyote. I have three of those, and then two of these Light Fusions. So against Worms and some specific matchups. Uh, the coyote and the drum dancers really um, made it happen. And this coyote, this coyote was just crazy. Again, if you're complaining about Joga, I don't know. Um, you steal people's fourth wall items, right? So shut down their, take away their drums, and all of a sudden they can't, they can't do those drum solos anymore. Take away uh, the Rainbow Feather and Rainbow Crow doesn't come in Awaken. There's all kinds of fourth walls that really shut light down with uh, the Coyote. So, anyway, as promised, this is a PB Magnet Deck Tech RIP MetaZoo. Shout out to the five people that will end up watching this or not. <laughs>